Hey guys, Natalie Domino, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you do not know who I am, I'm a Roman Catholic YouTuber and I do YouTube videos on all things Catholicism. So if you're Protestant, Catholic, or whoever you are, you are welcome here. So today I'm going to be doing a February's reading wrap up of the book I read. If you didn't watch my previous video, it will be linked above in the eye. You should go check it out for, what was it, January's um, book review. I am doing reading one Catholic or some sort of faith, theological, uh, philosophical book each month so that I can do some sort of spiritual reading each month. My goal is to read 12 spiritual readings this year. Um, so we've gotten two down. Um, we're hoping that maybe by the end of this, I can even do more than 12 books, but I'm just going to say 12 books right now and I'm going to accomplish that goal and then maybe we will succeed it and overpass it by the end of this year. But before I get into today's video, make sure you like and subscribe down below. And if you haven't already, make sure you go follow me over on Instagram at Natalie underscore Domina for more Catholic content. So the book for the month of February that I read is The Seven Last Words by Venerable Fulton Sheen. This is the book. Um, I got it off of Amazon. I'll link it down below for you guys. So I don't think this is like the original cover, obviously, or anything. It was just by a publisher um, that they took the work and just made it their own with their own cover and everything. But this basically, I don't think there is a synopsis. There is an introduction that I'll read some of it for you guys because I think it's very helpful for understanding the story. It says... Three elements conspire in the making of every great message, a pulpit, an audience, and a truth. These three were present in the two most notable messages in the life of our blessed Savior, the first and the last which he delivered to mankind. The pulpit of his first message was the mountainside, um, his audience, unlettered Galileans, his truth, the Beatitudes. The last message he delivered had for its pulpit the cross, for its audience, scribes and Pharisees who blasphemed, temple priests who ridiculed, Roman soldiers who gambled, timid disciples who feared, Magdalene who wept, John who loved, and Mary who grieved as only a mother can grieve. Magdalene, John, and Mary, penitence, priesthood, and innocence, the three types of souls to be found forever beneath the cross of Christ. The sermon that audience heard from the pulpit of the cross was the seven last words, the dying sayings of a savior who by dying slew death. And then it goes on to explain that um, the cross is the pulpit and all that stuff. And this book, that is just, that's the language of how this work is written by Venerable Fulton Sheen. If you guys haven't read any of his stuff, you need to. I also have a book, it's like a daily devotional that it's like a sentence a day from Venerable Fulton Sheen. This man was a brilliant. Um, he dedicated his book in the beginning to... Our Lady says, compassionate queen of the seven swords and hearts where Christ thy son is king. I give thee seven words, lovingly accept for what is best in them dropped from a cross in the lips of God. Like, that is just so poetic and so beautiful. So it goes through the seven words. The seven, the first is so basically instead of like chapters, it's put up by the words that Christ spoke on the cross. So the first word is this. So it's not actually like, oh, one single word, like hello or goodbye or anything like that it's more of a phrase so the first phrase is father forgive them for they know not what they do so he goes on to just explain basically all of that <laughs> in just such a beautiful way and then the second word this day thou shalt be with me in paradise so obviously he explains the repentant sinner on the cross then we have woman behold thy son the third word and then the fourth word is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then the fifth word is, I thirst. Oh my gosh, this one was so good. And then the last word, the seventh word is, it is consummated. Like it is finished. It is so good. The way he splits it up is he'll do probably like four pages, just four easy, like, and you can see how they're set up. Like they're pretty short. Four little pages he'll do. And then at the end, he will have a prayer. Um, so this prayer starts down here and it goes here. He just does a prayer and it's so easy, so simple. You just pray basically for like graces of what he just talked about in this little sermon, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I, I just really 
love this book. It was such a good read. It was so quick, so easy. I'm filming this right now, February 17th. And this was my book for February. So I already finished it. Like I finished it within like two weeks and I really could finish it within a week. So it's a really quick, easy book. I mean, you see how short this is. It's easy to, to digest and it's just very beautifully written. Yeah, I would recommend this like wholeheartedly. The only thing I would say going into it is that, yeah, there's not really like a synopsis. So it's kind of hard to recommend it. You kind of just have to read it. If you really want an in-depth type of like long study about the seven last words, I wouldn't recommend this for like trying to study them that hard. But if you just want an introductory into the seven last words, I would recommend this. Or if you're just looking for something kind of poetic and just thought provoking, then this is here for you. It won't do all the work for you. It won't spell out everything, but it will definitely get your mind thinking um, of just Christ's dying words. So what I like to do in these videos is to then recommend the next book that I'm going to be reading, or at least convince you guys to buy or read along with me for the next month. So for the month, of March I'm going to be reading this The Catholic Church and Conversion by G I don't know why I said conversion weirdly it's conversion <laughs> The Catholic Church and Conversion by GK Chesterton from Ignatius Press um on the back a little synopsis of the book is in this book Chesterton's brilliance as a writer and thinker again shines through as he explains his understanding of Catholicism and the Catholic Church and how her appeal to reason and truth eventually won him over for Chesterton, a man misses the point of it all unless he acts on two essentials at the heart of conversion. He describes these in his own words. One is that he believes it to be solid, objective truth, which is true whether he likes it or not, and the other is that he seeks liberation from his sins. These two reasons are why Chesterton became a Catholic and are what he describes in his unique and colorful way in this book. So obviously, I haven't read it. It's going to be my book for the month of March. I'm super excited to read it because I actually have never read anything like a big work by G.K. Chesterton. Obviously I've read little quotes and found them brilliant and beautiful but yeah I'm just excited to be reading this. It's the chapters are the introductory, a new religion, two the obvious blunders, three the real obstacles, four the world inside and out, five the exception proves the rule and number six a note on present prospects yeah if you're looking for a good gk chesterton book this book came up pretty recommended to read especially as my first gk chesterton book and i have found that he's a brilliant writer so i'm really excited to read this so guys purchase this book so we can read it together um yeah that is all i have for you guys today i hope you enjoyed today's video please like and subscribe down below if you haven't already and make sure you go follow me again over on instagram at natalie underscore demina and just a little FYI, since it is Lent, I am not on Instagram or social media and I will not be able to, I guess, DM you or anything like that. Um, I'm not posting anything right now, but as soon as Lent is over, you guys wait for the content that I have coming up. So make sure you go follow me over at Natalie underscore Domina so that you can prepare for when Lent is over and I am back for the Easter season. Venerable Fulton Sheen. Pray for us. Have a blessed day, y'all.